And now it's time for a profile. Hey. Right, uh, it's uh, Christmas time, so don't be afraid. Uh, we've got one of the greatest players of all time, and we remember him all too well. It's Zinedine Zidane. <laughs> oh. Very few players get clapped in, but this is worth it. Get in. Get it. Oh, you've gone past me and you are old Ian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're clapping already. Clapping already. I thought for a moment then, when you intro him, I thought you were going to say Dave Kitchen. <laughs> really? No. Uh, he was this born... is my favourite player. Yeah, I, th- Ever, I, I think. Before you get into this, oh. I'm just going to start with Pete for a second. I was. I knew we were going to do Zinedine Zidane. Did you? Yeah, so. Who told you? You did. <laughs> and so, over the weekend, I was watching a lot of Zidane stuff and. I got, actually got quite emotional about it. <laughs> I, I was thinking, do you know what? Ronaldo, sending off stuff. Ronaldo's the, the greatest striker I've ever seen sort mm. of, of our generation. But, and Messi's got, got a big say in it and we'll have in the future. But it sounds like complete players. Mm. Zizou mm. has got to be there. And He's in got terms to be there. of just the joy of watching them. Like yeah. you have it with Messi now. You, you, you tune in to watch him and Zidane was the same. Just... Oh. just a beautiful, a beautiful he's Chris, footballer, and also very quiet and reserved in the old press conference and stuff. And he just yeah. had, but he had a destructive oh, side. He did. He did. We come on to that. Let's get this done before I get all teary. Um, <laughs> he was born on the twenty third of June, nineteen seventy two. Five years after the summer of love, seventy two. He could still do a job. He's still. He's what? What is he now? So he's thirty nine. He'd be brilliant. He'd still be. He'd still be absolutely brilliant. I think there's, anyone. Anyone can go to China that. with an Elka. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's clips on the internet where he's playing five a side against people, and he still plays for like uh, Real's uh, like uh, Masters. Uh, he plays for the Real Madrid veterans. I would not want to play against them. No. <laughs> Imagine that. Let's see yeah. if we can set it up though. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Did you see him uh, recently. He played in. Um, he he organises charity games with uh, Ronaldo. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, Drogba played as well, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, Hadji was there. Yeah, and uh, you see big fat Ronaldo chugging around the park. But Zidane <laughs> yeah. still looks the part. Yeah, of course yeah. he does. <laughs> I remember seeing him even in something like Soccer Aid a little while ago. And he was still just an absolute magician that doesn't look like a man yeah. who's retired against yeah. Ralph Little, okay, yeah. <laughs> Robbie Williams. Ugh. Yeah, uh, wasn't uh, a magician against Paul Lambert, though, was he? Mm-hmm. Come, on to that. <laughs> we'll come on to that. Yeah, <laughs> his parents are Algerian immigrants that moved to France in the fifties, and obviously uh, they had. Zinedine in Marseille years later he couldn't have played for Algeria by the time uh, Algeria kind of cottoned on that he had Algerian parentage because he'd already played for France I think there's a little bit of a myth that the Algerian national team manager back in the day sort of said no no he's not Mm. good enough or something so he was always a France player really Mm. either Um, way it's a bit of a stinker for Algeria (laughs) (laughs) well he was born in France wasn't he yeah he's played his football I'm pretty sure I've seen him or read interviews with him where he said he you know he's French he, yeah. he feels French anyway so yeah uh, that's it so uh, he um, quite incredibly really this is in 86-87 season Michel Platini retired from football and that was when uh, Zidane was sort of coming into the game with a youth set, youth set up at Cannes so you know one comes in one comes in mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he, had, he had played football in the streets of Marseille well in the, the suburb of Marseille where he'd grown up and uh, he was playing for youth teams at Cannes but he would often even back then playing for the youth set up at Cannes he would get frustrated at people kind of kicking him and uh, trying to bully him because he was one of the best players oh he's always had the right temper on him always no, well, no people w- would would try and take him out because he was one of the better players and that would really frustrate him and they recognised this uh, back then the, the academy director at Cannes said that he tried to drum it into Zidane that players will always try any kind of method to, to beat him because mm. he's so good mm. and he said you know you'll get knocks from now until the end of your career that's just how it is for players as gifted as you if you take the law into your own, uh, your own hands you'll spend life uh, on the sidelines watching everyone else play even mm. back then yeah. mm. he did try to, to put him off it so uh, it, it, quite an odd one the, for the same reason that um, the, uh, the director said that perhaps maybe you should I, I think this was a bit of a crafty tactic from the uh, director's point of view but he said that Zidane maybe clean the changing room to let off some steam so Zidane was often <laughs> sort of mopping up after the players and they left and that kind of stuff but he got into the Cannes first team and uh, helped them finish fourth in the league which they, was their highest finish um, for years and years and he got a move to Bordeaux in, in the 92-93 season so he's now a bigger club mm. people in France just starting to uh, to get to know him and he's playing mm. alongside the likes of Lisa Razou and, and, and Christophe Dugarry and famously well, sorry James no, I was just going. God, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty. Are you going to talk about Tour of France at Birmingham now? I was, <laughs> I was going to say that, of course, infamously, while he was at uh, Bordeaux, a few clubs were interested in in, in him. Uh, Premier League powerhouses at the time, Blackburn Rovers, 
uh, they were Ray Harford suggested that maybe the club should look at Zidane and of course what did Jack Walker say famously why do you want Zinedine Zidane when you can have Tim Sherwood mm, yeah. <laughs> or, or Stuart Ripley yeah, yeah as well <laughs> as well um, yeah so he uh, Bordeaux that was uh, where he first won his first silverware actually which was the Intertoto Cup oh yeah but oh my goodness it would get a lot better <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, arguably arguably yeah. he, he was a finalist in the UEFA Cup as well um, and on the way to the UEFA Cup he scored a 40 yard lob away to Real Betis which was like the keeper kicked it out one bounce and down yeah <laughs> and just, just little moments like that you know yeah. people were beginning to notice he scored moments. a lot of absolutely amazing goals mm. Mm. The, the, was, actual, the actual the absolute um, smashes were kind of uh, slightly earlier in his career as well I think like later on I mean apart from the volley and the you know, well later on he was just basically to. beating everyone in the penalty area and going on the keeper <laughs> and stopping yeah. him but he was a, a scorer of great goals yeah. you know uh, um, kind of more, more so than a great goal scorer because he didn't mm. score that many really I suppose he was uh, pretty you know, he, had, he had a decent sort on of par for a sort of attacking midfielder but no, yeah, certainly but, not out of the ordinary but yeah, yeah but the, the quality of the goals was just yeah. sublime yeah mm. Every time it seems. Well, yeah, the, the coach at Bordeaux realised this as well. He said one night amidst the uh, the bustle of the, the dressing room, he started juggling the ball around uh, in the middle of all the chaos, just using his heels. And he said, "I've known skill, skillful players before, but Zizou was different. I could have spent the whole night watching him. Yeah. <laughs> That's just in the changing room. Yeah, crying out loud, you know? um, juggling the ball with his heels. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where my heel is." <laughs> <laughs> Is it in my eye? <laughs> oh, dear. Let's well, try. <laughs> so Let's find Pete's heel. It was when he was at Bordeaux that the, the French realised this is a player mm. we have here. And people were talking about as being the replacement for Michel Platini, the sort of mm. weighted one. Um, so he played for France at Euro 96. And it was a decent team. They reached the semi finals. And this is when the, the wider audience began to notice Zidane as well, a very important player. Um, mm. And after the tournament, he was signed by Juventus in 96 and it's uh, fair to say he went on to bigger and better things from then on in and I suppose this is the second phase of his career shall we say mm. but I think it's, it's safe to say you know that Zidane he wasn't like a teenage sensation or no. even no. in his early 20s he was he was kind of um, uh, he definitely matured later on yeah exactly yeah. I mean he didn't have any hair by the, his, his 30s yeah. so I mean yeah. <laughs> he didn't look young at any point <laughs> no. he's no, one of those people right. who's never been young like uh, Bruce Forsyth <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael Parkinson yeah um, he won his first First uh, Serie A, his first attempt with Juventus, and they uh, defended the league a year later. He was two in the in the Juventus side that lost two Champions League finals. Ah, oh, that '97 Champions League final. Yeah, Lippi Lippi's Juventus lost to Dortmund three one. Mm. That that front six of Juve started that game. They played a diamond midfield yeah. with uh, Deschamps mm-hmm. at the base. You're having that all day, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Delivio and yeah. Jugovic with Zizou just behind uh, Alan Boxic and Christian Vieri they still lost yeah. <laughs> Del Vieri came on as well yeah he did he came on. and Lambert had him, I know this is, this is Zizou's pro, sort of profile so we don't want to go too much into it but Lambert was excellent marshalled him mm. absolutely marshalled mm. him but clearly he'd just been stuck on him and he yeah. was like just stick to this man but he, found, an but he found time to set up a goal for Riedler as well he, he, he was he was excellent that game Paul Lambert you know, but this isn't the Paul Lambert profile is it <laughs> <laughs> no. it isn't um, so yeah uh, we're back at Juventus he was uh, Everybody knew him now. Mm. He was, uh, you know, a European mm. superstar. Yeah. Putting in some great performances of Juventus in the Champions League and all. And but a lovely free kick on him as well. Yeah. yeah. No, you don't really think of Zidane as a free kick taker, but he scored some absolute <coughs> beauts. He's always been in teams where they've had a lot of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Especially yeah. with, with Real Madrid. Now, it, it was at Juventus, perhaps, I, I'm not too sure his disciplinary record was like at Bordeaux, but it was at Juventus where we just started to see the, the one flaw in his game, which was his temperament. I'm pretty sure he had sharp elbows at Bordeaux as well. Yeah, well, I'd imagine he would do. I'd yeah. imagine he would do. But uh, he was memorably sort of. Or, you know, infamously sent off against Hamburg in the Champions League for a headbutt. Yeah, and uh, is that the worst? Probably the most sort of famous headbutt of his career. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing about that is, is some a character like you and Rooney's. They just they just little sly kicks at the back of somebody's heel. Yeah. A headbutt, you can't really yeah, disguise yeah. that. Bash. Oh yeah, off. there's no half measures with the man. Is there any truth <laughs> in the fact that because he was from? I know he had a stable family life, and his his parents always provided for him, and he had a loving family and that sort of thing. But he did live in a quite notorious area of Marseille. Oh yeah, so he, so he probably had to be quite tough. I know yeah. it's a bit of a cliche, but it's probably true. He was from the rough streets. Yeah, yeah well, he played a lot of football as well. So this is where he will have been getting kicked about. This is where he's, he's ten. 
temper will have been sort of kind of forged almost because you know even playing football people would have given him this rough rough treatment they would have been hard kids you know yeah I, I also I also I've always thought that. Um, you know, people get in a fight. Some people are wrong, and they like throwing their fists around and stuff. Mm. But you've got to be like a but particular, Marcus. yeah. <laughs> you've got to be a particular type of like loose can to just stick your head in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not my first instinct. <laughs> yeah, to stick hurts. my head right in there. It's sort of punch or kick and run away. That's how you know he's <laughs> tough because he gets his head right in there. <laughs> mm. I like a good head, but <laughs> well, um, he used, used to live in Scotland. There you go. Yeah. You see. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was a bit of a character, old Zinedine. I mean, Marcelo Lippi remembers an occasion when managing him at Juventus, saying that he was leaving a restaurant at 11 p.m. This is um, Lippi, and he said he saw Zidane playing football with people from a neighbourhood where he had Algerian friends, and he said, "You know, what are you doing out, out well, this just time?" Bumped into each other. Yeah. Well, well, and he said, "What are you doing this out this time of night?" And he said. Said, I like playing with my friends. I, said, I told him, "You're right. It's wonderful, but make sure you don't go to bed too late." You know, <laughs> <laughs> so he was quite. Um, a, a, he remembered his roots. Yeah, yeah. Zidane. You yeah. know, and if, I mean, we'll. I mean, I, I don't remember mine. No, no sure. I tried to lose mine as soon as possible. Well, so it's yeah. sort of extra. Yeah, well, they kicked you out after all. Well, yeah. But um, in 98, after the World Cup, which we'll, we'll talk about 98, but he did say afterwards, one one in the World Cup, he said, "Like all children in our neighbourhood, we played our own World Cups." And uh, I ended up taking part in a real one. I will we'll always remember that. The times me and my neighbourhood friends had our own little World Cup, and he said, in a way, I was representing them. Oh, yeah. So he oh, feels yeah. a deep connection mm. with, the, with the people from the neighbourhoods and the, the suburbs mm. of Marseille and, uh, and whatnot. But let's talk about France 98, which is when he put himself into French folklore. In fact, mm. World Cup history yeah. books, you know. That lovely pair of 1998 Adidas Predators as well, didn't they? Mm. That <laughs> great boots they were. <laughs> was he not, I, I thought it was. Um, oh, he was Predators. He's predators, man. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Because later on in his career, he started wearing the gold predators, didn't he? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, oh, well, what a play. I mean, mm. he was r- the real creative force in that side. I mean, they were a fantastic se- team. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Got sent off there as well, didn't they? Well, yeah. they, again, that's where I think some people weren't um, so aware of that sort of destructive side. And against Saudi Arabia, was mm. it? In the group stage. Completely needless, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they, they're winning, they're, they're comfortable, and he stamps on a player. Yeah. How did you, again, it's, it's like Wayne Rooney two nil up against yeah. Montenegro. Yeah. Flash points. I think Zizou Crazy. had fourteen red cards throughout his career. Oh, yeah, which I is think quite a lot. It's a lot. I think that's <laughs> one more than Vinnie Jones. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. He, um, or is it equal? I, I think. Didn't he get a real chance with the French national team when Cantona was banned for, was, uh, for kicking that fan? It's possible. Yeah, that's some volatile players. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I think he kind of took over from Cantona, but Cantona didn't really feel the boots of Platini. Yeah. Cantona was People hugely hoped. ostracised by yeah, the French yeah. national team anyway. But yeah, the thing about Zidane, speak, it's interesting that you're touching upon his, his ruthless streak and his temper, and his and he's undoubtedly. I mean, everyone listening to this show is going to know they're going to have seen him play, but he was a very very hard man. But he's also like an epically graceful player. Oh yeah. god, yeah. He it was almost like an extreme, two extremes That's coming right, together. Yeah. You know, this this hard, tough, never get knocked off the ball, but also so light on his feet, so graceful. Mm. And and one thing we mentioned Messi at the top of the profile, sort of maybe he'll go on and write his own story. Um, but Zizou genuinely two footed. Genuinely, yeah, 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 you, yeah. you couldn't say that about Messi, and you couldn't say that about Maradona either. But They're it, both very left footed. Yeah. Zizou's perfectly balanced. And perfectly he, he had that. It is all about the balance as well, because he had that glide to him mm. where he, it would look like he was just ghosting past. But players, deceptively quick. Yeah, yeah. His, his, his legs were like sine waves because it was like you'd sort of look at a step over from uh, from Zizou and then you'd look at a step over from like I don't know, Cristiano Ronaldo mm. and Cristiano Ronaldo was all about the quick. stabbing of the feet yeah. and the yeah. quick. Mm. He would just he would just bamboozle players yeah. to, to a certain extent. He was adroit. He was he was it's, it's graceful. He was like, just graceful is the word. Isn't it's like it? a hypnotism. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. It was just like he, he would just have such great balance. He'd take balls down um, from pace, height, whatever, yeah. and they would be at his feet and in front of him. Yeah. And then he—I wouldn't mm. say he'd be off because he wasn't. You know, he wasn't all about pace, but he was just. Oh man! There's, there's that famous, there's that famous bit of control. I think it's for France. Where someone bullets the ball across field, well too high, well too fast, and he just leaps and just just about gets it on his chest. Mm. And within like a half a second, it's at his feet. He's away, He's yeah. away again. Honestly, he is like a computer player. Yeah, you yeah, know, a computer yeah. player. The ball comes it's, over and just goes. Yeah, boom, sticks yeah, to yeah his absolutely. Away. It's yeah. like it, it's like he'd catch the ball with his feet. In fact, I'd like to see his feet to check they're not just another pair of hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a master of the drag back. Absolutely perfected yeah. the drag back as well. Oh yeah, that's that, that move is, is permanently associated. Yeah, but the, one of the funny things was people often used to say his heading ability wasn't great in the World Cup final two goals yeah. with a head yeah. and the, one of them was a great header one of them one of through them, the legs of Roberto Carlos yeah probably. that one didn't have any <laughs> real pace on the cross either yeah. he really generated the net muscles well, he, he headbutted it <laughs> yeah he did yeah. <laughs> yeah. but that, that was 
probably the, the pinnacle of his career. I mean, maybe the, the, a moment we'll come on to it, Real Madrid. But the World Cup '98 was 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 his really, mm. as was 2006, which we'll talk about in a brief moment. But that World Cup, I just think that I think a few people didn't quite know him at that point. Well, they, they, yeah, they, they they did for Juventus, but perhaps they. They thought he's not that type. He's, he can't win a World Cup. Well, this is the way yeah. this is the way football often goes. You have you have people who love football and they watch different leagues. Don't forget, thirteen years ago in this country, especially, it's a different play. Football's a different mm. play. The internet's not out properly. That's yet. right. That's right. He's, the World Cup is still is to a certain extent, but it used to massively be about you see these players yeah. consistently for the first time. Yeah. You know, lo- even now, a lot of football fans won't see players like Zlatan, for example, unless they play in the Champions League because they won't mm. watch foreign leagues. Yeah. So. This is a perfect example of Zidane coming into the fr- into the fray because France are at home and and they're obviously going to do something in this tournament and Zidane is the absolute fulcrum of that team mm. and he, everything that he does um, everything they do sorry revolves around him and I just wanted to go on to say that you know people also sometimes talk about Zidane as like the perfect number ten to me he was a bit more than that yeah. he was he wasn't just a number ten because you think of a number ten as as, as cr- being the creative fulcrum as I mm. said and the playmaker but you also think of him as being drifting in and out of games and, and being there when you want when Zidane you're doing well there. but Zidane mm. would take the game by the scruff of the neck if you weren't yeah, doing yeah. well he'd be dropping deep and getting the ball he'd mm. make things happen you but know? also he'd, oft- he'd often play on the left side of a diamond He's often on, slightly on the sort of left centre, I suppose. Mm. You know, I think people think of him just behind the, the front too often, but or as a central player. I mean, he was more central that he was obviously not a, a left midfielder. But, but he would, he would always drift he, inside. Though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but it, yeah, so France '98, he was absolutely wonderful. And the match that he missed against Paraguay, France really struggled to beat yeah. Paraguay. And it was a golden. Well, goal, they always looked at him. They always. I mean, oh, it was yeah. just it was it was a case of from memory. It's a long time ago now, but from memory, a lot of the time it was a case of look, just get. Up, get your head up and look for Zidane give it to him but it's the, it's the sensible way to, to be of course you've got a player like that I think that, that's why it's so unusual that Messi isn't used in a similar way for Argentina mm. at the moment if you've got a player that good he's got to be the, you, your go-to guy you know. and also don't forget they were almost playing like a strikerless formation had give Arch mm. up front who, who was supposed to be a striker but he wasn't yes, really right. yeah I mean he was, the best was supposed to be a footballer yeah. 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 Well, it's Duke, interesting because by the time 2000 came around they had Henri and Trezeguet and that seemed yeah. like perfectly natural but well, back in the night yeah it wasn't well, the case Euro 2000 I, I thought he was as equal maybe a touch better actually than what he was in France 98 I thought he was magnificent in that tournament mm. and that was we all knew him then mm. he was an established player mm. and he still stepped up you know some sometimes maybe the pressure none of that he just continued quite happily uh, you know uh, in, on top of the world where he was and a great free kick against Spain in the quarter final mm. and uh, and then against Portugal in the semis it's the, the last couple of minutes of, of extra time they've got a penalty Portugal have had three men sent off for protesting it's all crazy yeah now a lot of players that's a lot a lot of pressure some would maybe stick that wide mm. would, but not as a that top corner Corner. Was Zen like calm? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the penalty he scored in the final and in 2006 yeah. off the crossbar. Well, Perfect he, he, chip dinked penalty. He dinked a penalty. <laughs> yeah, in, in, the, in the World Cup final. final. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for crying out, he's got his levels. last ever game. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just well anyway we've got to talk like. about Real Madrid before that one in 2001 he did join uh, Real Madrid and he was the ultimate uh, Galactico I think we can agree there um, interestingly enough apparently at an awards dinner in Monaco there was there's a little story that suggests that Florentino Perez he was there uh, wrote on a napkin and passed it to Zidane do you want to play for Real Madrid because he couldn't be seen as tapping him up and mm. all that sort of stuff so I don't know whether that's true but I'd, like to, <laughs> I'd like to believe that Perez would, would even uh, use the napkin to sign a player yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but he went to Real Madrid and do you reckon they sort of went to you then? Well, I haven't got to pay for him because I've got this now. <laughs> yeah. He's already and signed it. Yeah. So. Um, he was a part of that um, Real Madrid side that included the likes of Roberto Carlos, Raul, Ronaldo, and then Beckham. Hamden Park. Later. Hamden Figa. Park. Champions League final. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Hamden Park. It's, it's by Leverkusen. <laughs> yeah. It's a volley. It's a goal. They've won the, they won the Champions League. The only time he won the Champions League, I always think of him because he played in so many yeah. finals. Mm. He only won the Spanish League once, I think, mm. Madrid as well. Yeah. The, you can tell he's a great player is if you need any more confirmation by the, the key footballing moments you're talking about are finals, finals. in major yeah. competitions and they're huge contributions yeah. to them as well that volley yeah. describe the goal Carlos 
<laughs> sort of just it's a kind of desperate sort of cross sort of over the top of his head and then in, in, in the middle and then the ball to be fair he's got a bit of room yeah. he's got a bit yeah. of time he doesn't need that time he's going to take it first the, the, the ball is the ball touches the cloud yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit of time so I'll probably just volley it with my left foot shoulder high into the top corner yeah. his, his foot was higher than his head I'm sure yeah, yeah. That was, that, it was incredible it was like it, Bruce Lee-esque yeah. if Bruce Lee played football that's the yeah. kind of stuff yeah, he yeah. would do yeah. it was just it was like he took his leg off and used it as a big bat. <laughs> Get that in there. <laughs> absolutely glorious yeah. stuff. And, and, and they, they won uh, the, the Champions League. Uh, World Cup 2002 was a bit of a write-off for France. As, mm. and Zidane was out for the first two games of the tournament. In Euro 2004, they fed a little bit better reaching the quarterfinals. My, my favourite bit of skill was from that tournament. With a, with a, with a hit back heel flick. Yeah, yeah with Henri, yeah. Henri short corner. And he j- managed to judge the bout so incredibly. And we're yeah. talking about him volleying stuff on the back of his heels, which is apparently in the eye. Uh, <laughs> and he sort of flicks it with his heel over the top of a defender. He was at the front post, wasn't he? Yeah. He Flicks it over the defender that's coming to cover Zizou, and then Galas fucks it up. <laughs> like a point blank header for Galas, pretty much, yeah. and he messes was it, it up. Was it against Switzerland in the first round? Maybe? I can't remember, but it was just, be- it was just. Yeah. He scored the best a penalty against still. England in that time. And a free kick as well. Yeah. Again, showing and we, the cool yeah, remember he threw up just before yeah. that penalty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot I about that, yeah. But he later he said that's. A, he did a sick. But he later said that's because he was exhausted, not because he was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't worry about that. It wasn't nerves, right? Yeah, no way. Now, he is Buddha. <laughs> yeah. You can imagine him being sick and then like one of the England players going, What you a bit nervous? No, nah, I've already won this. <laughs> yeah. Why? I've just had a gone? kebab <laughs> half time. Yeah. Rooney just bending down eating it, thinking it would make him better. <laughs> yeah, probably would. <laughs> probably I'd try it. The image of Wayne Rooney eating <laughs> That's enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sick <laughs> off the floor. Anyway, it's not the worst thing he's done. We've we still got we still got World Cup two thousand six to yeah. talk about. <laughs> Um, uh, well, we, we've got there. Zidane <laughs> said it would be his uh, last hurrah, and, and my goodness, <laughs> um, France didn't start very well in the tournament. They got better as um, as they went on, and Zidane in the quarterfinals against Brazil. I mean, that was one of his best performances for me that I, yeah. I enjoyed. You talked about the step overs earlier. He did. He was like that Brazil the classic sort of stamba stuff to them <laughs> they couldn't touch him it wasn't only that it was like the amount of times he would receive the ball almost out of his back to Brazil's goal on around the halfway line with a couple of players around him and it would it would literally be like one or two touches yeah. he'd be away yeah. it's, it's like two a or three pirouette every single time yeah. wasn't it and he was he, he suddenly found himself behind the defender yeah. like, what the hell lest yeah. we forget this was only what five years ago five yeah. and a half oh, years yeah. ago and he was, he was 34 he won the golden ball that time he, he? Was, we won yeah. the, he was the best player in the world still at 34 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and when he retired, he retired best player in the world. He yeah. set up the goal for Thierry Henry in that game, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. And we've spoken about this before. It's a really weird stat, though. You've got to remember as well that Thierry Henry is France's all time leading scorer. Zidane's one of their best ever players. That's the only time they ever combined for a goal. Amazing. Good time right. to do it. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of his heading, he almost scored a header in extra time. In the yeah. World Cup final. Yeah, and Buffon well, well, That should have been the moment, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, that should have been the, the, <laughs> yeah. the big hurrah, yeah. but Buffon was. Do you reckon after that, he thought, what am I going to do now? I know. That's, that's gone wrong. It yeah. needs to be about me somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just a brief mention in the semi final again uh, against Portugal. They got a penalty. Mm. Well, we we need this scored. Yeah. It's a tight game. Well, yeah. big man, boom. Yeah, it's, it's, his record for France in terms of goal score is not far off one in three. I think yeah. he's got thirty odd in one hundred and ten games, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He also, um, when he scored that penalty in the final against Italy, he became one of only four players alongside Hurst, Vava, and Pele to have scored three goals in World Cup finals. Yeah. Uh, but it just. It, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Is that a really <laughs> iconic photo, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Of after the sort of the matter. He's wearing thing. the ten shirt. As yeah, well, he's right. walking away from the World Cup, just sitting there. It's one of the great, just, one of the great sporting images. Though. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's just he had a very storied international career, which is one of the things that makes Zidane yeah. uh, one of the true yeah. greats yeah. because his his story is up there with his ability, yes. you know, and he fulfilled so much of those things, and it's got a really dramatic sort of um, kind of timeline to it. But um, it, I remember just being heartbroken by oh, it at well, the yeah. time. It just feeling like no. No, I this shouldn't thinking, be happening. But I also remember thinking that is fucking punk rock as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's rock not in a way his career. Yeah, like yeah. Back. It's, one of the, it's one of the greatest. It's one of the great iconoclastic moments. I mean, Absolutely. It, 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 how many? How many other players, if they'd done that, would be? You know, that would have tainted their. You know, but. It wasn't. It wasn't. And yeah, Le Monde famously had that. I don't know if it's a headline, but a, a sports story saying, you know. They sided with him. They backed him. And, yeah. and, and if you think about the craziness of that, if you think it's, uh, I know it's stupid to compare England and France in that way, but if you think of a, of a newspaper um, having to run a story about a player effectively costing a team the World Cup mm, and yeah. then siding with that player, it's crazy. Yeah. But he, um, 
I, I, the reason I like that moment in a way is because it, it wasn't doing to make it all about him it was a purely instinctive thing and it, he was such a natural footballer you almost can forgive him making such a natural decision to do that because it was off the spur of the moment yeah, but, mm. uh, uh, well on one hand you can't have moments and flashes of brilliant inspiration which win you games and win you tournaments and win you massive trophies it will never be forgotten because of his instant inspiration mm. yet at the same time not have the other side of the coin with this instant well that's what I'm poor saying. decision making off the top of, off the top of his was head was it not incredible in his well, last instinct, game it's instinct isn't it it's an instinctive decision in his it? last game which is the world cup final there's no bigger game in football you see everything about the man yeah. you see the coolness to dink a penalty and the sheer gall and the sheer confidence and, mm. and all that sort of stuff the guile the, the, all the other things that w- we've mentioned and he was and clearly the see, difference maker on the pitch as yeah, well. you could and, feel that it was going to go France's way it felt and that way. you see that that side of him that mm. since playing for the youth teams in, in and the France, ref didn't see it the ref well, didn't even see it well there's cons- conspiracy theories that suggest he should have never been sent off because they reckoned that was he the first player to be sent off by a fourth official yeah, yeah. yeah. retrospective yeah. I, mean, yeah. I remember seeing it happen and just thinking like, like the maths in my head going Oh, he's got to go. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. to be sent off. Well, but what is that kind of? It was, but it, was, it wasn't a footballing decision to do that, was it? It was kind of like just someone said, yeah, so we, "We can't have that." You know, <laughs> we can't have that. We can't have that in a World Cup final. We'll yeah. be made a mockery. He's oh yeah, to go. no, yeah, to go. I, I don't, I don't, I don't deny that. I, I think, in a way, I know what you're saying about the retrospective thing and the video or the fourth official because the fourth official undoubtedly got the attention of the referee. Mm. You, you still have to be sent off. You, you can't do that. Of course. You can't. You can't smash your head into someone's solar plexus. Mm, whatever yeah. they said about your mum. Uh, yeah, even if it is made. Hurt that one. Oh come, oh, come on. on! Why is there a head? Look at the way Matarazzi went down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Although did he, he, he did go he down. Stood up yeah. and never he, he did go down like wrestlers go down. Yeah. You know? yeah. You know, <laughs> Top heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I'm nah, spreading my back to ease the pressure. Like I've done this many times before. It was an absolute beauty, wasn't it? Oh, oh it was. Yeah. <laughs> Not Dion. <De> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. So uh, since retiring, he's um, as you say, Pete's playing for Real Madrid veterans team, which I pay to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Organises charity matches with Ronaldo. Aldo and a UN ambassador as well, Goodwill ambassador, raising a lot of awareness of poverty. He does a lot of charity work. Yeah, he does. And usually he, it's always organising football matches, it seems, and yeah. playing in football matches and touring like Canada and yeah. stuff for, for, for cancer. Oh, yeah, it goes all over the place, you know, yeah. some, some, doing some wonderful My My, my friend, who's a, f- a football journalist based out in the Middle East, um, once interviewed him at a press conference with Dan, yeah. and he said that, um, yeah, I, was, I asked him a couple of questions, seemed really moody, and initially I was a bit annoyed with him. Then I thought, well, why does he want to speak to me? Why would someone like him want to speak to someone like me? <laughs> so I sort of forgave him. Uh, around, <laughs> that's big of him. Yeah. yeah. Around the last World Cup, it was um, there was that big. Uh, I can't remember which company it was. I think it might have been Givenchy or something. They did that uh, that photo shoot with Maradona, Pele, and, and Zidane. Zidane. Yeah. yeah. No, it wasn't the Givenchy. It was um, uh, Louis Vuitton. All oh, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. The great see, uh, great footage of Zidane and Pele playing table football. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely marvelous. Um, we must say as well that he's only one of two men, along with Ronaldo, to have been crowned World Player of the Year three times. Mm, that's and something. he was given the award for the best player in the Champions League's kind of brief history, I suppose, or twenty or year or so history, and voted the uh, UEFA best European player in the last fifty years. Mm, really um, we'll end with a quote from the, the great uh, Marcello Lippi, who coached Zidane. Uh, Juventus he says I think Zidane is the greatest talent we've known in football for definitely the last 20 years at least he, and yet he never played the prima donna I am honoured to have been his manager come in he comes in that is Zidane. the end of one of the most enjoyable profiles <laughs> absolutely and don't forget he's also um, the star uh, main protagonist of uh, Zidane the 21st century portrait which is mm. a film um, very artistically sort of art oh yeah film. set up lots of different cameras didn't they so it's yeah four or five on Seven, him something 17. like that yeah, just, 17 yeah, cameras. Just, just filming four or five is not many at all <laughs> throughout a game it's Sandra, for Real Madrid yeah soundtrack by Mogwai as well mm. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, worth brilliant. checking out it's all like real time isn't it yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's really just, worth just follows uh, Zidane it's called Zidane a 21st century portrait player cam should always be like that. Yeah. <laughs>